Good afternoon folks. Welcome back to Ed's shed. Another view. Um, right, today. I have a little chat about um, getting your bike back on the road. And things you should um, have a look for, have a look at, check over, make sure your bike's alright, that sort of thing. So, we'll start at the... At the bottom, work our way up, or at the top, work our way down. Top down. Um, first thing you got to check for is that your bike's in overall good condition. Check for uh, rusty bolts, loose bolts. If your bike's been sitting there for a while, just don't presume it's okay to put back on the road straight away because it won't be. It won't be. You'll need to do something to your bike to get it back on the road. Um, Take the seat off, check the battery, check it's not rusty, corroded. Um, just check it over because you'll be a fool just to get on your bike and ride it again without checking it over. You've got to do it. Um, the one thing I always forget is, is when the MOT is due. I always forget to check the date. Um, the date's very important because you don't want to ride around without any MOT. It's not good. For those in other countries, an MOT is what us Brits have to do once a year for our vehicles to get through a, uh, a certification of roadworthiness. I'll put it like that. Depends on where you go, depends on how strict they're all meant to be the same, but uh, yeah. Horses for courses. Um, right, so that's it. That's the overall thing that you want to check on, on your bike. Um, Rust, rusty things, there are various ways of getting rid of the rust. Uh, we'll go through them on other videos or you can check out other YouTube channels on getting rid of rusty bolts. There's various ways of doing it or just replace the bolt. Um, if you replace the bolt, you won't always replace it with a stainless bolt, so be careful of that. Plenty of advice out there for that sort of thing. Um, but it's a very simple thing to do. If they're engine bolts that have gone rusty, try and get the most of the rust off and then just give it a little dab over with either um, some heat resistant paint. Um, what I do, I'm going on me now, but what I do is, you get the spray can and you get a lid. Uh, if you've got um, any any paintbrush, any paintbrush. Um, make sure it's an old one or a, a cheap one. Uh, cut the bristles down so you've got about that much, say half an inch of bristle left on that. Get the spray can and spray it into the lid. Uh, when you spray it into the lid, you'll have a load of liquid in the bottom, and then just paint paint the liquid on, paint the paint on. Don't spray it on. Paint it on with a brush. They get a thicker coat that way um, and it will stop the rust coming back so well it won't stop it going back but it will, it will stop the rust from biting on a bit further um, right so that's what you do with your bolts on your engine if you've um, if you've got lucky this time of year if you've got a black engine um, you will have you will have a layer of damp which is like a white deposit over your engine wash it off just wash it off um, when you wash your bike in this weather make sure you dry it that's very important if you don't dry your bike it will go rusty because there's this this time of year it's damp and damp gets everywhere um, speaking of damp next thing would be uh, your electrics make sure your electrics work um, all the obvious things, check your indicators, check your headlight bulb works, um, just just check all your dials working, you know, you've got light un uh, underneath your speedo. If you're out at this time of the year, it gets dark at past four. Um, if you live anywhere that's got a country lane there and hasn't got any head, uh, street lamps, you're not going to be out to see speedo if, if the light behind it is blown. So check they all work. Don't just go out in the daylight turn the ignition on and go yeah my headlamp works I'm done 
go out to your bike overnight, turn the ignition on, make sure all the lights work. It's very important. You've got to see your, your readings on your rev counter, your speedo, your idiot lights or, or whatever. Now, it's unusual for idiot lights to blow, but check them anyway. Check them anyway. Um, Right, next, uh, blah, 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 down, it's a bit, the electrics, da, da. Um, exhaust. I know you check your bolts and check your nuts and bolts, check everything's tight and all that, but but just just give your exhaust a tap. If it's gone rusty in there, you'll hear it rattling around. Just, just give it a tap. If it is rattling around, you'll have to get that stuff out. Best way of doing it is start your engine. Start your engine, blow it out. If your exhaust is blown that much, Got to replace it, baby. Um, right, next. When it comes to things being replaced, I'm talking um, brakes, tyres, uh, things like that. I mean, you could check your brake pads. You could check them by looking at them. On a motorcycle, we're luckier than, than the car driver. We can look at the brake pads and see them. We can see how much meat is on there, uh, and we know if they need replacing. Um, one thing that was said to me a very, very long time ago was you don't muck about with it with your tyres and you don't muck about with your brakes. They are lifesavers. And in all honesty, uh, a couple of years back, um, I didn't pay attention to that and it nearly cost me a big fall off. I was coming down um, a stretch of road near me called the A45. It's a nice dual carriageway. It's a busy, busy road every day of the week, right up till late of the night. Uh, it was Sunday afternoon. I was coming back from staying over at a friend's house in Daventry, um, or near Daventry. Coming down the A45, doing about 70 on a hardtail chop, and the front tyre blew out. Well, that's what it felt like. It felt like it blew out. Immediate deflation on the front end. Luckily, there's the handlebars I had were, were wide and at a good height. And I managed to hold it. How I held it, I will never, never know. Smoke everywhere where the tyre was rubbing on the, the uh, mud guard and forks and everything. It was a, it was a nightmare. Um, friend in front of me. He said to me, uh, when he eventually got down the road, turn around and come back, he said to me, he was going along one second, then all I saw was a cloud of smoke. Now, I know if you get a blowout in the front tyre on a motorcycle, it's bad. You are going to come off. And when you come off, you're going to come off bad. Um, we're on bikes. There's nothing around us to protect us. Um, so, anyway, the mistake I made was... I said to the guy in the shop near to where I live, uh, where a few of my friends go to get their tyres, um, I've not got a lot of money, I need the cheapest tyre you can do. The the wheels on this hardtail chop was um, Z750, GP Z750 wheels. Fairly old you know, sort of thing, 110 by 19, I think, I don't know, I don't know what it was. But it was a cheap Chinese bloody tyre, and oh dear. What we'd worked out was that the, the rim had popped, the, um, the bead, the bead on the tyre had popped and deflated the tyre. That's what we'd kind of worked out because um, 100 yards on from where I eventually come to a stop, um, there was a garage. Pulled into the garage, inflated the tyre and it stayed up. It stayed up until I changed the tyre, which was pretty rapidly soon after that. But there's the there's the tale. Don't buy cheap with tires and brakes. If someone says to you, there's cheap brake pads, they're half the price of what you'd pay for the good ones. Don't bother. Don't bother. It's not worth your life. Um, which I found out. So when it comes to brake pads, find out what ones you need. Obviously. If you're not up to doing the job, brake pads are very easy to replace on a motorcycle. If you're not up to doing the job, 
to take them down to a local um, bike dealer, brake pads to replace. They're not expensive. They're, for, the, for the cost of you buying them, a little bit extra, they'll fit them as well if they supply them. So find out first. Don't muck about with your brakes. It's very important. The, the other thing is tyres. And I've already said about the tyres. Don't buy cheap tyres. Don't buy cheap tyres. Also, it doesn't matter what bike you've got. You've got a choice of tyres what you put on your bike. Uh, mine I've got Avons. Well, I could, I've got Avons, Metzellers, or Dunlops I think. I can't remember. But they're the choice of tyres I can put on my bike. Now then. If you go to your local tyre shop and say, I need tyres for my GPX, FZ, CB, FR, whatever, they'll go through a book and they'll find, you know, they'll watch that because they don't know off by heart what tyres you want. They are not an encyclopedia on tyres for your bike. They'll probably sell you what makes most money for them, they'll probably take, uh, sell you what's easiest for them to get. And they'll probably sell you something, oh yeah, my mate said these are the best things since sliced toast. Well, forget it. Hold on. If you want tyres for your bike, and you know you want Avons, ring Avon up. Ring Avon uh, Tire Place up, uh, the, head, the head office, wherever it is, uh, ask to speak, ask to say you, you've got... Um, got this kind of bike you want to know what tyres they are they'll put you through to a technical department and that technical department will tell you what tyres you need for your bike um, I've done that a couple of times the last bike I had, uh, I had to do that with was a Triumph it needed I think that might have been Avon when I went down to the shop and said I need a pair of Avon this that and the others um, he said oh yeah he said you need that Avon then you'll need that one that'll be that much right on but I weren't quite I weren't happy with what he said because he, he like I said he, he just went through a book and said oh yeah you need that and you need that I thought no hold on it so I rung Avon up and he went no 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 he said forget the book he said forget what tyre places tell you for your bike it was a Triumph Speedmaster um, 05 lovely bike beautiful bike um, he said, no, he said, forget the book. He said, what you actually need is this back tyre, this front tyre. He told you what the air pressure was um, and recommended, you know, everything to do with your tyres. It was brilliant. So that's the advice. If whatever bike you've got, go down the shop by all means. But go down the shop armed with the knowledge of what tyres you want. I'm, I'm going to say it doesn't even matter what your mate said he's got on his bike that's the same of yours find out ring the tire manufacturer up they've all got a, um, a head office in England um, ring them up ask to speak to someone technical about choice of tires for your bike and they are more than happy to help you they're more than happy they want to help you because they if they sell their tires they stay in their job so they're more than happy to help you it's a very important tip so pay attention to it. Don't be afraid to ask someone uh, from the uh, from the tyre manufacturers. They're there to help you. So take advice. All right, I rambled on a bit there, but honestly, I can't I can't overemphasise it more. Um, all right, so that's tyres, electric lights. Um, same as same as a, a car, really. When you want to check your back light and you're not quite sure if you can see it right. If you can pull your bike up against the reflection of something, like your front room window, your back room window, a shop window, anything, and you could try, you could try your lights then, because you'll see on the reflection whether they work or whether they don't work. Um, what else have we got? What else have we got? T. That's all we've got. T. Right, we've gone over uh, clothing in the past. And gloves and all that. Um, this time of year is it's unpredictable. I mean, we're, this weekend they say it's going to be up to about 10 degrees, by 8 to 10 degrees, and by the by the Monday it's going to be down to minus four or minus two or something. So you can't predict this weather. 
you must ride to the ride to the weather. That's what you got to do. If you think you're going to go on a long journey, I wouldn't recommend it. I really wouldn't. Not this time of year. It's too. It's just not worth it. Always travel during the daylight hours um, because when the when it gets dark, it gets cold. When it gets cold, it gets slippy, gets icy, gets frosty, and it's just not very nice. You get cold, everything gets cold, it's not a nice drive. So if you're going to ride out in this weather, do it during daylight hours if you can. If you can't, try and postpone it, or, I don't know, go in a car. Um, I think that's about it really, just a little, little, um, yeah, just a little video on my advice on what to do with your bike coming out from the, the winter storage from Christmas. A lot of people drive all year round, so those people will know um, what I'm talking about. Um, but that's about it really, so get your bike ready for the, uh, the, new, the new year, the spring when it comes. It's not too early to do it, do it now, because if you're doing it now, you can take your time. If you wait until you're all going for a ride on the weekend and it's already Thursday afternoon, it's too late. It's miles too late. Start doing it now. Start getting your bike prepared now. Um, start getting it defrosted and check everything over with your bike. Don't cut corners with your motorcycle safety. Don't cut corners with your motorcycle and keep your motorcycle safe. You've got more chance of keeping you safe. Uh, yeah. God, I sound all responsible all of a sudden, don't I? Do you know? Yeah, so that's about it, I think. That's about it. So, um, I've said so again. God, I, I don't like it when I start with so. Got a new bit to put on my bike a rack. Bought it off Amazon. What a load of old rubbish. <laughs> Cheap shit from China. I'll show you. <laughs> I don't know if you'd be able to see it, but the uh, let's have a look. The welds. The work. Jesus. The welds on that. And the plating. Look at it. I mean, it was it was cheap. It really. Look at the welding. It was cheap. There was there was some luggage racks on there for seventy odd quid, eighty quid, ninety quid. Uh, because my bike's a bit different, they don't actually, you don't, you can't buy a, a, a rack like that for it. So I've, I, I thought, well, I've got to adapt one. Uh, if I've got to adapt one, I don't want to start mucking it up by <laughs> buying a dear one. So I bought a cheap one. And <laughs> cheap shit from China. It really is. But it will serve a purpose. If I have to recoat it or whatever, then I'll do that. But it will serve a purpose for now. And... Um, well, I'll give you updates when I load it full of luggage. I've got to, I've got to adapt it somehow to fit the bike yet, so it's going to be a long while off. But yeah, cheap shit from China. <laughs> right. The temperature today is that. That's how cold it is today. So, everyone, be good. Everyone be careful, stay clear of the loonies, there's really, really loads of them this time of year, just stay clear of them, don't become one. I'll see you next time, and honestly, give the tyre company the call.